Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. And Ben, I understand. Your only choice is to revolutionize the world. The path you must take has been prepared for you. I have literally no other choice. I have been (laughs) tricked, bamboozled, and possibly brainwashed. A slave to your memories. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, well, the Tenna, what, Black Rose arc? The Black Rose saga. A saga, <laughs> right, yeah. The Black Rose buds, if you will. Oh, that works on two levels. Hey. Um, a little more confusing. I have more questions. Sure. Um, I'm not sure what the ending was kind of i mean i hmm i understand we'll yeah it's like knowing the result but i don't know the the path we took kind of sort of sure <laughs> a lot of stuff going on uh good yeah. stuff some cool stuff um some kinky stuff Yeah, so we've got our new our new arc structure this time it comes from our new villain Soji Mikage and he has his his goal is to kill the Rose Bride and instead insert Mamiya Cheetah uh, a boy who kind of looks like Anthony in as the Rose Bride instead. Mm-hmm. And to do this, he has these black roses. And he has this thing, the the Mikage Seminar, which in, seems to involve people coming into his place, sort of confessing their dark truths, and then him saying, oh, I see. You have no choice but to revolutionize the world. The <laughs> path has been chosen for you. Then they get stabbed with a black rose that sort of what's happening. They're like being trapped in that dark feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they go and put a note in Utena's locker to meet them for a duel. And then we have a duel. And the duels all, they're all these tables with an object that matters to the character and their red outlines like red figures of people lying on the floor which is tied into this thing where a hundred duelists died in the building where Mikage is does this stuff and uh things get revealed and characters have their little Episode arcs and Utena wins. That's the that's the, the gist <laughs> before we sort of start going through the episodes. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's just like I've played Persona. I know what's going on here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Utena fights their shadows. Yeah. <laughs> it is not. It is. It is similar to Persona Four. That is correct. Yeah. And even like the, the uh, the tables thing, like with the objects that they like, kind of kind of persona e, you know, and that's a battle sure. field type. I I don't know. The yeah. vibes were, were there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, still, it's still a banger. Is my, <laughs> is my quick and dirty, yeah. like, I thought. I thought I would get a little, a little tired because it's very, it's very. I'm gonna butcher the word formulaic. Is that does that work? Formulaic, formulaic. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we get the the invitation to fight, and we get the the top tier shadow play stuff, and we fight. But it, it it just works, like it's balanced so well against like everything else. I, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. I had an enjoyable time. And nice. you know we we get to dive into some other stuff too, which is neat. 
meet mm-hmm. some new people. Yeah. Right off the bat, uh, we meet. We formally meet because he was he was in the last episode too. Uh, Akio, mm-hmm. uh, she's Auntie's uh, older brother, <laughs> and we meet his fiance, who is literally only in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Kanai, who's also the daughter of the headmaster. Who is sick, apparently. So Akio's basically the headmaster of the school. Uh, take Doing duties for that guy, uh, who we never meet. Uh, and we find out the Kanai fucking... She goes in and she, uh, she hates Auntie, because she thinks Auntie hates her, too. Well, Auntie fucking... What did she do? She, like, disrespected a scarf? Um, she, like, gave Auntie a scarf. And Auntie, like, uh, didn't wear it as a scarf right away. She, like... Yeah. I forget what the hell she did. She did something. She, like, used it as a napkin. Or, like, didn't... I, I don't know. It was something fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. But it was the... Yeah, the choo-choo or something? Yeah, it was something, but it was like disrespecting a scarf, and after that, she's like, "Nope, you're yeah. a bitch." <laughs> yeah. Um. And you know. Uh, so there's stuff. There's 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 stuff there, but I guess I want to cover other stuff first before we get into it. Yeah, the yeah. Auntie, auntie stuff. Um. Sure. Then we get. An episode about Kozue, Miki's brother, twin brother. Um, and in this this fight is the first time because it doesn't happen in the first one where Kozue like takes the sword, draws a sword from out of Miki, yeah, and uses. Basically uses his heart to fight Utena, and she ha- she like basically gains his fighting style mm-hmm. for Super the cool. duel. Super cool. Which is a a, a neat idea. Um, then we get an Anami episode where she orders <laughs> she gets a cowbell. Oh my. F- and she Fucking starts because she, she thinks it's you know expensive designer jewelry that she ordered, and she starts oh my God. turning into a cow, and then she turns into a cow, and we have a, like a duel with her as a cow. Yeah. Uh, she has I a just... dream about being taken away to slaughter. What a! They play the a traditional, I think it's a traditional Jewish folk song, the Dona Dona. Hmm. I mean, about a about a cow going being taken to slaughter. Yeah, <laughs> a calf being taken to slaughter. Uh, it's, until, it's so good <laughs> until she like started actively turning into a bovine. I uh-huh. was like, this seems like a good deal. Just get you just feel content <laughs> standing around in the grass eating, uh-huh. eating some sandwiches. Like, I'm I'm about that life. Uh, then it got a little too much, but what a what a great <laughs> fucking episode! Every single she started like, oh. saying "moo" with her lines, and then dude, why would you why would you do that? <laughs> that so good. I love like the the frame of her silhouette where like her arms have turned into cow foos. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so good. Uh, and then it turns out. It's not Sebastian Dior. It's Cowbastian Dior. God, just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid but amazing bit. Uh, and uh, the one who ordered it was Anthe. She ordered it for her cow, who's yeah. named Nanami. <laughs> not suspicious at all. Oh, man. <laughs> just regular shit over here. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. It's just another day in the life. Just get a scene of her, her at the beginning watching their tiny TV in the dark. Mm. Oh. Man. So uh, and then we get uh, a Shiori episode. The girl that Jury has a thing for crush on, yeah. Who's like who thought that um, Jury had a thing for this dude, so she went after this dude and was like, Oh, I'm sorry, Jury, I broke your heart, but also then it was revealed that she was just trying to hurt Jury, but then she found out Jury wasn't into that dude at all, she was into her. And, uh, then she, you know, is, like, both, like, now I can really hurt her, and also she (laughs) she feels all weird about it. Yeah. Um, I forget how that duel ends. Other than just duel happens. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not positive myself. Oh, I don't remember. It's one of these. I think it's one of these episodes. Fuck, now I can't. Now I'm. Uh, if we had done this in the weekend in my brain, my memory would have been sharper. Yeah. Because I know there's a point where Jerry's talking to Nanami and Miki, and she's like, Oh, I see you both. Like, it would be so much easier for you. You just could not be in love with the person you're in yes. love with. And then yeah, they look back at her change. and she's like, I guess that's true for me, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where she's like, how convenient it would be if you could just change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, like, and like, there's a thing of, like, her wanting to get rid of... The, because she wants to get rid of the the pendant, she throws it in the and yes, she throws it in the lake. Mm-hmm. So that's Mik- Mikage gets it to give it to Shiori. And but then at the end of the episode, Jury gets it back, and she's like back where she started, basically. Yeah, she's wearing Shiori's picture around her neck again. All right, next episode, <laughs> we get um. Mitsuru. Swabuki. Yeah, Mitsuru. What's Mitsuru? Uh, his first name, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. He's always, I always think of it as Swabuki. Because that's what Nanami probably, calls him. And she probably. says his name the most often. Yeah. I'm not uh, just looking at the Wikipedia page. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Swabuki wants to... He gets, like, in his head about becoming more adult. Yeah. And so he goes into a movie theater and starts watching movies of people kissing. Just like a like a clip reel. That's the way... To learn how to kiss. That's how you become an adult, my dude. <laughs> How you become an adult? Can and also confirm. this episode introduces his female friend who's his age. Yeah, and then he, he's just like incredibly awkwardly then tries to kiss her in that movie theater, and she slaps him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. The bit I remember out of this episode is him mm-hmm. pulling out the banana. And being like, if she just eats this, I'll be satisfied. And his chick friend is like, that's dirty. And he's like, what? What's dirty about it? She's like, never mind. <laughs> There's also a thing where she like takes a bite of a chocolate bar and then throws it away. And then he takes it. Because oh, Japanese yeah, people the, have a weird thing about indirect secondhand kiss. kissing. Yeah, the indirect kiss. Where you eat something that somebody, that the girl you liked ate or whatever. You know what? you liked. You know what? Out of, out of everything, that's easily the most degenerate thing. Calm down, <laughs> fucking 
so many. That's I've, I mean, that that's the thing. I've, def- I've seen that in other anime. That's just a Japanese thing. Like, yeah. I, oh, dude, so many, so, so many other anime. Like, even uh, Nagatoro, yeah. that's a whole, like, she takes a <laughs> sip of the green tea and then... Like, have I been there? Absolutely. I remember being I remember being twelve and like having that realization. Did I did I need an anime episode about it? No. I moved on with my life. It was a thought that entered my head and then it left. Like most of my thoughts. But yeah, yeah. no, that's a <laughs> Truly pathetic, honestly. <laughs> it's pretty bad, dude. Oh, garbage um, chocolate. <laughs> but so the cool thing in this episode is then when Swabaki goes to draw the sword from Nanami, it draws out two a <laughs> sword and a dagger. Yeah. Because like like in her duel with Utena, where after she lost, she then pulled out a knife and kept going. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was good. Um, the good stuff. It's just like Nanami's heart comes already broken in half. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, she gets broken. Then we get a, a Wakaba. We get two Wakaba episodes. Yeah. First, we learn out ab- about the Onion Prince. Like her, her, her yeah, friend she had childhood friend when she was a uh, he a kid yeah he like he defended her he didn't really he didn't do anything he held her hand <laughs> she just Look. he was standing there and then she was like people were calling her onion head and she's like well yeah well the onion knight will protect me or whatever and grabbed his hand and he was like what <laughs> um and that has you know that moment in him has turned into. Him liking her, but he's a fucking bitch. So he does the other, another Japanese trope of instead of asking out the girl he likes, ask out the friend of the girl he likes. That's how you do it. I, you know, that's not. I just, don't understand that one. That's not just <laughs> Japanese. That's global yeah. strategy. Ugh. Tried and true. I I don't understand. That's how it works, dude. You gotta you gotta cause a little pain to get a little love. Yeah, and this this one's funny because Utena's like starts seeing through him, and is like, "Ah, oh, walk about in this dude." Yeah, that makes sense. And she like encourages him to talk to Wakaba, uh, and then he he do, he confesses to Wakaba in like an indirect, like third person way of like, "Yeah, you should talk to the one you like. He definitely likes you back." Because Wakaba seemed like weirdly, weirdly jealous, but then uh, she's like, "Great, I will. Thanks. <laughs> Bye." <laughs> Such a good ending. It's so good. I love it's it. Like, what? They had me too. I was like, <laughs> I, I was pretty sure that there was going to be a, a conversation. <laughs> she just fucking dips. <laughs> Bye. Oh man. Uh. Uh. We also got. So that's, more importantly, yeah. maybe most importantly. Uh, we got the Atena drinking tea thing. Yes. Which uh-huh. went straight to my heart. <laughs> like, that's none of my business. Oh, so good. Uh, even when Atena thinks she's on top of things, she's all, also misunderstood <laughs> things. Dude, it's so good. It's such a great, like, it's such a great balance. Ever since you... Uh, you mentioned that the the voice actress got the role because she played up the naivety, naivete. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, great way of looking at it. Yeah, like I can see it, <laughs> and it makes sense. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then so he the the most hilarious part is like he goes to the Mikagi sub. The Makari Mikage like the seminar. elevator of doom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then he's just like, I just why she doesn't like me. And I wish she did. And Mikage's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Stop being such a little bitch and disrespecting my evil 
<laughs> elevator. But like in his heart, he's just sad. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it was so good. Like I love that he just got, <laughs> just got snubbed. Okay. So then uh, we found. It turns out that. The one Wakaba is in love with is, of course, Sionji. <gasps> Going back to episode one. Yeah. That, uh, he's been hiding out at her apartment <laughs> since he's been kicked out of school. Yeah. And that's uh, that's the, the plot of our next episode. Is uh, him living there and Wakaba being super, super stoked about it. And... Uh, Sionji starts carving this, like, hair clip. And, like, has Wakaba even, like, showed off. And then Mikage shows up and is like, Yo, I'll let you back in school. You just have to give me something. And uh, Sionji's like, Really? Okay, cool. And uh, they don't they don't say explicitly what it is, but uh, the next day... Yeah. Wakaba's going home, and Auntie passes her wearing the hair clip, and Wakaba is not very happy about that. Just pretty bad, pretty pissed. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be though? Yeah, you know? so Wak- and Wakaba talks about not feeling that, like when she was with when she had Sionji. She felt special, and she never feels special otherwise. Yeah. She fits in with her hair color, which is brown, for being normal. <laughs> yeah. Normal people have brown hair. Uh, true. Um, so she... <laughs> so Sainji gets back to school, and then uh, when Wakaba pulls the sword from him... She doesn't just let it, like, pop out the way they normally do. She fucking pulls it out. Of, she, like, attacks him and yanks it out. Yeah, dude. Very aggressively. Fucking let it uh, rip Beyblade style. This episode is is so good. The, Cause that, the fight, the duel is incredible, dude. It's my favorite duel. It's so good. Um, cause so once Utena sees Wakaba up there, she's, like, freaking out. And Auntie's like, Atena, you got you have to draw the sword. Fucking draw the sword now. Utena's like, I can't. Dude. Um and Utena just starts like trying to hold her off without the sword. Mm-hmm. Until eventually she like grabs Wakuba and she's like Wakuba mentions Sayoji and Utena's like, oh no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? Uh Utena grabs Wakuba. And gives, like, I'm fucking, this line so gets me. It's like, I don't know what's going on with you. All I know is that you're my friend. Oh, Now hold so on good. while I save you. And she fucking just, it's like holding Wakaba's sword hand, just flips it around and takes the sword out of her hand while holding her other hand and flips the rose as they're both, like, falling backwards. And, like, mm-hmm. a tear falls out of Wakaba's eye. It's so Dude, good. It's, like... E- easily beyond 10 out of 10 it's such a good yeah. it's such a good sequence <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there's a there's like a short clip on youtube of like just that part with no dialogue in it just the animation hell yeah put that on twitter a little while ago when i watched the episode shit is so good but that line fucking gets me too. It's so good. Yeah, dude. Perfect, perfect execution. Yeah, but like plot-wise, also, uh, Bakage just like lets Sionji stay back in school, so he's just around. Yeah. Again, he doesn't get re kicked out. I mean- uh, next episode, we get troublesome insects it's called which is about, and it's about um one of nanami's three groupies <laughs> and we kind of get like uh the inside track on like what they those three characters are about mm-hmm. and some some history about how they became enthralled 
and an army. Yeah. And then it's and ha- and like and the one we follow the most, uh, Kaiko, like how she's in love with Toga. Yeah. And we well, get they're... more of an update on on how Toga's doing and he he's like kind of getting back to he's less like emotionally destroyed. He's kind of getting more back to normal, though he hasn't gotten involved in anything else yet again. Yeah. But like there's a party for him and then Nanami like makes Keiko go get something. I forget. Yeah. But she like basically yeah, she kicks her out. Kicks her out of the party. Yeah. Um, and then that uh that opportune moment. It's raining. Yeah. I have an umbrella. You do not have an umbrella. Yeah. Trade deal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's share. And then she's like all happy about it. And then Anabi sees them and is like, nope, you're cut off. <laughs> and not and Keiko so Keiko's now out of the out of the party. Her, t- all, her other two friends also completely shun her. Um, yeah, so that drives her to the Akagi seminar. And she takes Toga's heart as her sword. Yeah. And the, the funniest part is when she duels Utena. Utena I, don't, I don't even know her name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't even know who this is. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> some, isn't that like some uh, Thanos shit? <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh it's so good. And then we get our we finally get some backstory on Mikage where he was like So, the... I forget. So, this is where, so like, it, yeah, all of my understanding left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, we, ha- we had the story of the 100 boys who died mm-hmm. in a fire mm-hmm. at the building where Mikage hangs out. But, and the story is that they just rebuilt the build- building. Yeah. But the, I'm just going to say the thing that actually happened rather than trying to repeat the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So, <laughs> so, so reality, a long ass time ago, mm-hmm. Mikage was who we see him as now as a, a prodigy, like running this secret group trying to like start the duels and open the forest um and you had this and like he knew this woman um Tokiko with her or and her little brother Mamiya yeah who's like terminally terminally Ill. illy uh, so he basically, it's, yeah, like the, the, the main thrust of it is, and this goes, this goes into like, I'll, I'm even going to skip ahead to the, just get through the plot yeah, of the next yeah, episode. Absolutely. Where, so now Mikage's down to his final Black Rose. He's, uh. And his plan is to try and, like, con- he wants to try and convince Utena to join him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Utena's, like, hanging out in his waiting room and then is like, wait, why are there pictures of all the <laughs> Black Rose duelists I fought on this wall? Yeah. <laughs> um, and Tsukagi talked about how they all had... Uh, a memory that was important to them and like clearly and she does too but also he doesn't ever call her Atena he just starts calling her Tokiko and like there's a shot where he sees her as Tokiko yeah yeah um and it's he's like trying to like talk her into 
or like talking about how she has this cherished memory that she wants to, to she must want to protect too. She just punches him and gets fucking furious. It's like I'm not like you. I'm not manipulative, dude. And, so uh, good. <laughs> and then she sees his duelist ring and is like, "Fucking, I'm gonna duel you." Yeah. And then he's like in the elevator. He's like, you know, if she didn't see the ring, she might have killed me. <laughs> Oh. Um, but then as he's going down the elevator, he's like having a conversation with Mamiya, but it's not, Mamiya isn't there. He's like having a conversation with the flashbacks of Mamiya. Yeah. It's the way it's shot. And then at the end, like one, like it's, and it's all like shots we've seen before. Like the shot of Mamiya hands the black rose to him, like in a way that realistically doesn't make any sense, but that's how it's depicted. Um, so he goes to then be the last duelist against Utena and the, during the duel, um, so we get this, this thing of the reason the, all those duelists died the in the fire for, for something tied to end of the world was that Mamiya started the fire and then Mikage goes like, no, uh, and like takes up. Yes, he, he was right to do this, but as he's dueling Utena, he starts again seeing these these flashbacks of Mamiya talking to him, and goes, "No, you're gonna lose." Yeah. And also, he then his his memory of what was reality starts unraveling, where Mamiya didn't start the fire. Mamiya was already dead. He started that fire. Mm hmm. Uh, Toki, like, Mamiya wasn't slapped. Tokiko slapped. Also, Mamiya didn't look like Anthe. <laughs> Mamiya was some other boy. <laughs> yeah. The reason this Mamiya looks like Anthe at the end of the episode, we find out, because it is Anthe. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it, but, so, like, the main thing is, the other thing that happened in episode 22 was, the actual Tokiko shows up at the end of the episode, but she's way older. Mm -hmm. She has longer hair, and she's meeting with Akiko, Akio. And they have they have a line of, like, you know, people... I think Akio says, people at school, they never they never grow up. They never become adults. And Tokiko, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> and she talks about how Akio still looks the same as he did back then. And it's... We have the thing of, like, Mikage was trapped in this, the moment, he was trapped in this memory or whatever, this moment in time. So he wasn't changing, he wasn't moving forward, and then he was defeated, and he's gone. We get, like, when his duel ends, we don't see it end, it just cuts to, like, Akio on a phone call, like, talking to Mikage about why he lost or whatever. Hmm. Um. So, but mainly, like, like the whatever the magic is that was preserving him, and then when they go back to that building where Mikage is, now it's a burned down building, and nobody remembers. Mikage. Yeah. So After Mikage is dead, season. right? Like he's, he's yes, he's, he's okay. Just been <laughs> dead. He's he's dead. Um, he's the one who started the fire. Why did he start the fire again? Like, I know it was something he was talking a bunch about, like, you know, sacrifice a little to gain a lot or whatever. That sort of deal. But, like, I think it was, do we I have think it was directed by End of the World. Okay. So Probably just something stuff. would start, like, the way I'd... to kick, as a way to potentially revolutionize the world. Okay. Like, to amass the power. Gotcha. Like to create, I don't know, to to because the black roses are basically fueled by the those dead gotcha. bodies, right? Like every time a one of the black rose duelists fell, another like coffin like shoots off into yeah a fire pit. Gotcha. Such a cerebral anime. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're not telling me shit outright, and I have to think about it. Uh huh. That will continue. I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, they do kind of tell you how it, like, there is literally a phone call of Akio explaining what happened. You just might have to watch it more than once, also. 
Yeah, I mean, this is one of the few times where I'm like, I'm already stoked for a rewatch down the road. Totally, totally. Like, this is definitely a show that rewards uh, watching it over again. But, so our big, our big reveal of fucking Nanthi was partially behind this whole thing, too. Yeah. Not only, like, Akio. And we didn't talk at all about the running thing where Akio and Anthe are clearly sleeping together. I mean... That's, like, building... She being teased at the end of the, all the early episodes of, like, that... Of part of how things are fucked. Which is, which is the main thing of sibling relationships are fucked. This, that's, like, the where the core of it lies. Yeah. Is in. And that'll, I mean, that'll get more explained uh, next arc. Okay. Next saga. <laughs> I mean, that will that will come come. We'll, we'll we're gonna go there. You know what? In terms of evaluating of the whole thing, still feels better than Sword Art Online. That was a that was sure. a punch in the because that's 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 like self insert fan fiction character. Well, it's way too horny. This is yeah. like, I mean, surrounded by it, like. I feel like the scenes in it. This is like this is like fucked up in the way fairy. I mean, yeah, yeah. really, it's fucked up in the way old school fairy tales are fucked up. That's like the space it's playing in, Mm -hmm. in terms Mm -hmm. of being a story about adolescence and oh, absolutely, and escaping from the the systems you're born into. I will say I'm in I'm enjoying because I mean, I was given permission to overanalyze, and yes, one of the. One of the things I've been doing, which uh, for something like Kill a Kill is like maybe more of a coping strategy, but it's just fun to do here is like, if I'm going to take all of this as being like, how how old are they all supposed to be? Like 13, 14, something? Uh, oh, 10 is 14. 14. Okay. So probably yeah. everyone's between the age of like 13 and like 16, maybe on the upper end or whatever. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying not like literally taking it as. Like, but also, we've never learned like Akio is like probably hundreds of years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's 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 magic at play here, oh, and characters is... are are stuck in yeah. memories and stuff. So they are. in the first arc, it was a little easier, at least in, until like that that clip show. But I was kind of enjoying like, all right, is this just like approaching it from the perspective of it being like just like teenage fantasy like a like a I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the words like it's not it's it's in their head sort of or it's you know symbolic like just them dealing with issues but they're not really like having these fucking sword fights or something there's a term for it that I'm I'm struggling to remember and it's you know it's for like many things for me just kind of fun to think about but mm-hmm. uh this, this arc did away with a lot of that sure uh, but still yeah i mean like it's a it's a show made for adults yeah. about adolescence yeah about the change from being a kid to being an adult and i love like the, the, the i love the tone that that harrowing experience <laughs> See, like that's that doesn't the harrowing experience doesn't that doesn't sure. connect to me at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, it's I, I'm not gonna say anything was is lost, but like anytime I see a thing where it's well, so, like yeah. high school high school is miserable and middle school is miserable and like puberty is awful. Like, f- luckily, of course. Uh, all that shit was a very smooth ride for me, and that's Man. luck of the draw, of course. But <laughs> it's also about characters being, you know, like being born into a world that has systems that are fucked. Oh yeah, yeah. And you are, you don't ne- have the power to change them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But no, the the tone of this is is so good, and it's just a nice, it's a nice mesh. It's not too. It's not too much like it's not too dark and it's not too mm-hmm. mystical, but it also it, it walks the line between like real reality and and kind of mystical mm-hmm. stuff very well. And 
it, and it also it takes itself very seriously, but it's not afraid to be incredibly silly. Oh, dude, totally. Like I was, yeah. I was, I, w- I need to dive deeper for our next episode. But I was looking at some of the like supplemental booklets that ha- came with the DVDs, mm-hmm. um, and there was a part about where Ikuhar was talking about how one of the things they were afraid of was that they're kind of doing a parody of shoujo manga tropes and stuff like they're kind of but they didn't want it to be parodic like to come off that way and he said chiho saito is like the the manga artist who designed the the look of the show and the characters like that her work was incredibly important in terms of like grounding it in as shoujo material so that like that language was there as a foundation for wi- like that they were they were riffing off of so that when ridiculous stuff happened it still felt like natural within these still were the shojo characters who be- had the strong shojo emotions and they could be a little more abstract with like the literal things that were happening or whatever gotcha oh that checks out like the, just the way that the character designs like ground the show even when it's being completely ridiculous yeah no, and that's also, like, I I don't know, man. Every fucking thing about this is so good. <laughs> yeah. Just, and, like, I, and, like, there was an incredible amount of uh, attention to detail about everything. They thought about all this shit. Yeah, man. It, and it, it came together. Still a little, I mean. Also, I found that guy's shirt. <laughs> That one of the <laughs> creators fucking... who worked on this, he's like his professional photo for, like, his creator. Like he was wearing a fucking t-shirt with a N sixty four N on it that said "Naked sixty nine. Dude, oh, it's I was so, dying. So good. What a top tier shirt. <laughs> God. Unbelievable. <sighs> No, oh, I'm. I'm... Oh, yeah, so that was the the. I didn't talk about the the color purple. I, I purposely left it I... out. But it it is the color of corruption or the witch. Mm-hmm. So, I so need like a... Akio's hair is like whitish, purplish because he's he's the prince, but he's also corrupted. I was gonna find. And Anthe is straight corruption. And also the witch. Um, I need like a, <laughs> I need like a color list. Um, mm-hmm. I was doing some, I was doing some sleuthing, and I totally forgot what all of my any of my conclusions were. But sure, during the, uh, during some of the flashbacks, I actually forget. Uh, maybe I'd, I'll go back and see if they changed. But in I think the first flashback where we had the the building burning um the fake memory when he thought uh what's his name burned it down the kid uh i noticed that mommy yeah. th- yes um uh, i noticed that tokiko had um orange and purple lighting but in the same scene same basic spot uh Mikage had like pink and white lighting. I was like, mm, okay, okay. And I was like looking. I, I had to. I looked it up because I couldn't remember. But I'm like, orange and purple. What does that probably do? And like pink and white. What does that get us? And I yeah. forget if the second. I'll, I'm I'm gonna go check after this. But maybe the second flashback had different lighting. Even if he remembered, maybe not. Maybe. But. It's fun yeah. to it's fun to be able to dive into that stuff yeah. and have it be relevant. Yeah, like the colors sometimes they're they'll scuff it a little for yeah ambiance. Like like when they show grass is green, it's not always it's like nope. eternity. Nope, it's eternity. <laughs> grass is uh, eternal. The sky yeah. being blue That's, that means nothing. That's the crazy. times when it's really is like major colors on important objects or characters and like characters hairs and like with the roses in the corners or whatever that's like well or like when they'll show a rose yeah specifically those are like i mean those are the times when they're really look, really doing it my interpretation 
anytime they show a plant being green, that's significant. Uh-huh. Other colors, sure. unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. But no, it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. God, I love the show. I'm like, I'm, I'm pumped to do a. And it like there's not it, it's nice to have something where you can do like like take it all in and there's not a shitload of content. Like anime, that's not super long. Uh manga also not super long. The film, like the musical stuff and like there's light novels, but I don't know if those are worth doing. But like you can get all of it and it's not it's not a shitload to take in. Mm-hmm very nice yeah and like the other the other stuff is like different stories kind or like a different vert takes on this on the ideas sure like again we'll get when we get to the movie (laughs) it's not the same yeah no that's (laughs) yeah they'd like you know there's there's some ideas at the core of it there's a bunch of you know the the characters are all there but oh that's fine but it is definitely a different interpretation. And, like, the manga only covers the first, is only the Rose Saga. Oh. Is that just, like, so the... I guess which... I haven't... I haven't... I haven't haven't read it, so I don't actually know, like, what its ending is. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't dived deep into it. Like, partly because, like, a lot of my favorite stuff is the stuff that happens after that. So uh, like... Okay, this is wild. Uh, the manga series was written by the B Papas and illustrated by Shio Saito. Uh, began yeah. serialization in '96 and ended in '98. And then it just has, I mean, you know, it was re serialized and like released. But in 2017, they announced that a new chapter would be published. So two more chapters are published in March and May 2018, depicting the lives of the primary cast 20 years after the events of the original series. Oh. Right, that's I a didn't little, know they... a little spicy. Mm, that's interesting. Uh, Shoga... That's weird. Shoga Kukan? <laughs> Shoga Kukan? Shoga Kukan? Collected all three chapters into a single thing under the title Revolutionary Girl Atena After the Revolution. Yeah, but I mean, also like the manga I know is also more grounded in the real world than the show is. Sure. Like I think there's specific reference to like that they're in Europe, like the school is in Germany or something. Well, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Let me look at the architecture. Is it consistent with blah blah blah? But no, that's sure. That's fine interesting yeah i wonder i'll 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 probably read that before our next episode wow i mean i was going to suggest that we do um a manga episodes but that's fine go on without me leave me behind <laughs> whatever i don't care i wasn't getting excited for it in my head that's fine look look if we have uh, an extra weekend of recording time maybe we do that I'll make time. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that long. Like, there's only five volumes. Yeah. That's fair. But Easy, I, look, I've got a lot of Venom comics for you to read. But... Oh, no. <laughs> um... I mean, that... Yeah, I, that think, seems... I think that's... Seems oh, the it. other thing I wanted to point out, since now that we we know, Anthe is the witch. The like the clear the thing that becomes clear when you watch it is the way that the Nanami episodes are all Anthe fucking with her. Yeah, <laughs> like she orders the cowbell. The curry body swap thing it isn't because of anything Nanami does. It's literally Anthe's cooking. Yeah. Like, it's literally yeah. just Anthe fucking with them. And that's, like, there's, because um, yellow, the color of the princess, like, that's, the witch hates princesses. 
Like, there's just a fucking hatred for that Mm -hmm. in the world. So that's why Denami gets always is, like, about to be murdered by some rampaging animal. (laughs) (laughs) Whether it be an elephant or a kangaroo. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, That just, that's just what her life is like. I mean, and that's why Kanai is also, you know, fucking just feels the hatred. Who's Kanai again? Akio's fiance. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I don't. When did they say that she's like a witch or the witch or whatever? I feel like maybe you're. They haven't. They haven't jumped. I'm. I'm. This guy ahead a little bit. Spoiler. But you know that she was Mavia, okay? Yeah, but I, I don't. I didn't. The rest of it, I don't know. Sure, I don't think when I <laughs> take in media. Oh no, no! It, like it, it opens. It opens some doors. I just, yeah. I, I was wondering if I missed like the word witch at some point, and also like now that we've been discussing how my download is stupidly sectioned into seasons i'm like questioning everything about it (laughs) are the subtitles correct (laughs) i'm sure they're fine but Mm -hmm. no okay i honestly just actually kind of want that in your head as we go into the next arc sure as much as anything i mean which definitely puts like a very specific thing so yeah yeah Oh, I'm I'm stoked. Hey, man. Good shit. Shit is good. So, like the they break it up because they break up like like the way Wikipedia breaks it up is the Akio saga and then the Apocalypse saga, hmm. but that's still that's not like a difference. Yeah. That's like, it's like the end of the straight formula episodes of of duels, but like, doesn't include the last one even, (laughs) of like the regular duels, kind of. Um, Weird. So, I don't know why they do it that way. And the DVDs, it's just all the Apocalypse Saga. Ugh, that's not even, I don't even know. Can't even point to a physical media release to why they would do it that way. And yeah. the episodes came out, like, literally every week for 39 weeks. So <laughs> there's there's no that's... seasons in terms of broadcast. Yeah, that's so weird. Like, that's so weird that it would release that way, and then people are Well, just... so the way... Yeah, I mean, the reason it gets released that way is because the way a lot of a lot of anime gets released is they make the anime and then they like rent broadcast time rather than channels making the shows so that they can be broadcast the way like American TV generally works of like hmm. the networks ordering pilots and stuff. Like with an with a lot of anime, it's um it gets funded and made and then like airing on TV is like them renting time. They rent a time slot or whatever. Okay. So that's why they have like, that's why there are so many anime that are like, this is a discrete thing that has a complete story that is paced well (laughs) because they literally made it that way. They didn't, they weren't, they weren't (laughs) prescribed. uh, Yeah. A certain number you have to make and then figured it out as they went along. Well, I mean, that's good. That's what I've been... Yeah, no. I've, it's it's part of why... So, like, it's part, a big reason why a lot of the, the best anime work so well. is partially because of the way they're allowed to be... They're, they're made. It's not like... That part of it of being able to tell your story in the correct number of episodes without being rushed can be part of the the job. There are still times when it goes wrong, like 
Evangelion, like the one of the maybe the most popular anime ever. I'd say so. Like, had like um, had huge budget issues and like lost all their funding at the very end of running their show because they would they would run over budget on animating stuff and the also the sponsors got mad and also they were in a time slot for kids but they were making a slightly more adult show so this is all the sponsors i think like all the sponsors but sega dropped out by like the end of that show when it was originally airing <laughs> mm. yeah um uh, then there's weird stuff like um one of my favorite shows wolf's rain the last five episodes of like the TV airing are all recap episodes. Cool. And then the, the show ends and ended in like OVAs that got released later. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so if when you watch it now, it's fine. But for anyone that was watching that thing when it came out, that was been a fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a dumb way to <laughs> that's like the worst. So But yeah, no, that's been like the, the my two favorite like western cartoons that have come out in the last how many years um man keep on the age of the wonder beast and now apparently owl house uh, i definitely know keepo was like conceived and created all in one shot and then just released yeah. on netflix at whatever point they chose and i think yeah yeah Owl House has been, like, renewed, but it, it definitely feels that same way. Like, they're doing two mm -hmm. seasons and then a third season in name, but it's going to be, like, just special episodes, I guess. Like, Distant Lands yeah. sort of shit mm -hmm. that tie yeah, up. Yeah, like, like, the, like, streaming has completely decoupled the, the like, weird desires of broadcast of TV of, like, we were on a hundred episodes so we can hit syndication because that's yeah. the only way we get paid. Um, yeah. I now it's just either Netflix plays you up front and you get no money on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I was like, I mean, it sucks that I'm well, I will house, I guess, isn't Netflix, but it's still, I mean, any, anything right now. Kind of like you said, like it's, I don't even know if it's airing on TV. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck Owl House airs, honestly. If it's just online or TV or a bit of both. But, yeah. like, it sucks that I was surprised that Kipo, like, got another season. <laughs> I've been burned uh -huh. before. Man. I mean, Netflix is really bad about it because they will just say, nope, we're done. Well, I think they they they've said that it's just pure viewership. So like they just throw everything at the wall, and if it yeah. literally like I mean they've more, also one more viewer. yeah they've also had like changes in management or whatever it can also affect that stuff. But yeah. Anyway, it's good stuff. Anyway, good times. Antenna continues to be great. That's shocking. Uh, yeah. More. <laughs> Great stuff up ahead. I'm excited. Get a lot more Akio. Eh, less excited, but still excited. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to beat Akio's car. You have my attention. <laughs> that's all. That's all I'll say. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Email saltcirclepodcast at gmail dot com. Find the Salt Circle Pod on Twitter. Our episodes are hosted at anchor.fm slash salt circle, and they're on all the major podcasting platforms like Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. And I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels. I'm I'm not. If you wanna talk to me, you can go through my assistant. Uh he's on Twitter at Comic Panels. <laughs> <laughs> I will forward all messages to Ben. Yeah.